All right, hello and welcome to this video on RC car hacking with the Arduino. Uh, I'll be your host, Anthony Russell, and I'm going to be walking you through uh, a bunch of different things. Uh, first thing we'll cover is what you're going to need to do this hack. Um, we'll uh, cover how everything connects together. Uh, I will go over the code uh, in the Arduino IDE, and we will see a working solution. Now this is a relatively cheap uh, hardware hack. Um, the most expensive thing, honestly, is going to be probably your RC car. But I would suggest doing what I did and just finding a broken one. Um, my son had a broken one that I couldn't find the remote for. And I tried buying a new controller and they told me it was cheaper just to buy a new car. So I figured instead of throwing it out, why not tear it apart? So the first thing we'll go over is some of the hardware that you're going to need. Uh, as you can see on the table here, I have a multimeter back there. You're definitely going to want one of those. Uh, you're going to want a good soldering iron. Um, possibly this guy right here, a little magnifying glass with clippies to do your soldering. And uh, I won't be going over the soldering in this video uh, just because I already have the solders done and it would be too difficult to undo the solders. Uh, but it should be, I'll go over what solders need to be done. Uh, and, and of course, it's going to be slightly different for everyone, uh, depending on what model car you have and everything. But you will also need an Arduino Uno, if you want to follow along with what I'm doing. And this is a motor shield that has a few different H bridges on it. And as you can see, I have some wires already connected into it. And I'll go over that in a few moments. Uh, this... Uh, shield. I'll go over the details shortly on where you can find this exact shield. Um, and I don't know if you can see the link on there, uh, but I'll post that link in the comments as well uh, where you can get the code and everything specifically for this, this uh, DC motor shield. And finally, you're going to want to get a RC car. Now, this one I've already ripped all the guts out of. Uh, this is the battery container. We'll put that back together here in a minute. And as you can see, I hastily <laughs> I hastily hacked uh, together the battery connections. Um, I'll probably go through, back and do this a lot more clean in the future. But uh, just for this time, I uh, just for this short video, I kind of jammed in there and make this work. But uh, I'll go over how that fits here in a second. Now, uh, we'll have three connections on the RC car. We're going to have the rear DC motor and the battery connection terminal, which uh, I'll go over in a minute how I created that. And then also, if you want to be able to steer your car, you have to have a connection to the front motor as well. Now, this little guy and this little guy are going to connect into your H bridge. Um, so what I did was I ripped the guts out of the RC car and on the inside there was a, a board and the board had these connectors on it. This guy and this guy. So I pulled them off the board and I soldered them to some wires. And then these correspond directly to the motors and you can't mix them up because they're different sizes. So what we'll do is I don't know if you're familiar with how an H bridge works, but basically it allows you to send current in different directions. So uh, how these motors work is when the current's going in one direction, uh, the wheels are either go forward and backward or left or right, depending on which way the current's going. So what this little H bridge does is it sends the current one direction and then you say flip it and it'll send it the other direction. So that's how you control the wheels going left and right or the wheels going back and forth. So uh, that's basically it. That's how that works. So the H bridge will connect right on top of your Arduino Uno and we'll control everything from there. All right, let's get started. One thing that you're going to want to make sure before you start is what the voltage capabilities are of your Arduino. Now the Arduino Uno, I believe can go between three and 12 volts, somewhere in there. 
Uh, now my RC car battery is a nine volt battery, so it should be well within the range and capabilities of the Arduino. And what I did was I, I'm going to hook in the uh, car's RC battery into the DC port on the Arduino Uno. So what I did was I found an old computer power supply and I cut the cable off of it because it fit the, uh, it fit the well on my Arduino Uno. And I figured out which one was positive and which one was negative, and I marked the positive on there. That's where the multimeter is going to come in. So the uh, I'm pretty sure the uh, pin on the inside is positive, and then the sides of the inside are the negative, or the ground. And uh, yeah, you just need to check with a multimeter, make sure you're wiring it up correctly. So I soldered it and then covered it with some tape, uh, and then hooked it in where the battery goes down there. And you get just test it and you get a good current. But what will happen is the current will go in to the Arduino Uno and then it will feed it directly into the shield. Uh, so you won't have to worry. Now, if you had a if you didn't want to feed it in that way, you you could hook up a separate high power power supply. You hook it in right here and uh, it you can both plug this into the Uno and also uh, power it from a high power power supply from the outside. Uh, and you don't have to worry about breaking anything. The power will be localized here. Uh, and you can still send it across to all your different motors. So the way this is set up is you can see the M1 on there and the M2. And M3 and M4. Those each represent a different motor. So for this project, in the code, you'll see I'm going to be setting up motor 1 and motor 2. And they will correspond to the forward, reverse, left, and right. All right, so now we can start looking at some of the code. Um, before you get started with this, please make sure that you have the uh, proper library files installed. Uh, you, if you don't have that, you can head over to uh, the learn.adafruit.com site, and they have the, uh, I'll put the link in the comments below. Um, but you can come on here and you can get the uh, proper library install files and everything. Uh, what you're going to need is uh, the AF underscore DC motor uh, header file. This guy here, AF motor header file. Uh, that's the one you really want for this project, what we're going to be doing. Uh, just follow the install instructions and you'll be fine. Um, if you need the board or the Arduino board, if you need the, the DC motor shield or the Arduino board, you can go to SparkFun and get it there. Um, they're both relatively cheap and SparkFun delivers it pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to need to do uh, after you have the library properly installed is include the AF motor header file. Uh, next, after you have that done, we can go ahead and create an instance for each motor. So this is a little bit different than some of the languages that I, I usually work in C Sharp and Java. Um, so this is a little bit different for me. Uh, usually when you create an instance of something, it's you know, uh, uh, your type name, your variable name, equals new, and then your constructor parameters. Well, here it appears that you have your type, your variable name, so we're going to name it motor1 and motor2, and then your constructor parameters, so it's kind of like a shorthand, it appears. I'm not too familiar with uh, C++ and C, so this is a little new to me. Uh, but, uh, so the there is uh, two constructors. First, uh, your first constructor is just the which motor you're targeting. So we're targeting uh, motor one and motor two on the shield. And then the overloaded constructor has two parameters in it. Uh, the second parameter is for what frequency you want to uh, transmit it at. Uh, we're just gonna use the default. So in your setup method, what you're gonna wanna do is set the speed of the motor uh, now you can do this down here, it doesn't really matter, but uh, I just did it up here because this is how the examples are done. So if you download the uh, Adafruit examples, you'll see this is a similar setup to their uh, DC motor. This is just a slight variation on their code. But uh, it ranges from 0 to 255, 
So I'm setting motor one and motor two speed at 255. So when we go ahead and initiate it, it'll ramp up to 255. And finally in our loop, uh, I just uh, tell it to start pushing the current. So what we're saying here is motor one run or start sending the current in one of the directions. Now I, I'm hesitant to say forward and backward because you're not really sending the current forward and backward. These are arbitrary names. Uh, these do not correspond really uh, to positive or negative or anything like that. It's, it's entirely up to you. Forward and backward are just arbitrary names that were assigned. Um, so just know that it, it sends it in one direction and then it sends it in another direction. Um, so that's what we're saying here. We're saying uh, from motor one, send the current in one direction at a speed of 255 and same thing with motor two. Then we delay for three seconds or 3000 milliseconds. And then we send the current in the opposite direction and we delay it for three seconds. And then we do, we call the release command, which uh, stops current. And then we delay it for three seconds and loop back. So what we should see when we plug this in is the wheels go in one direction the the real the rear wheels will go in one direction and the front wheels will turn either left or right and then the wheels will the rear wheels will spin in the opposite direction and the front wheels will turn in the opposite direction and then they will all stop and return to their normal positions and that uh that should be it that's that should be what we see when uh, we upload this code and get it running Okay, so I've got the sketch loaded onto our Arduino. Now I don't have the motors plugged in yet. Uh, I want to, you know, it's always good practice before you start plugging in hardware like that to do a check with the multimeter and make sure that you're getting what you think you're getting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check both motors here and see if we're getting the uh, voltage that we think we should be. Now it should be spiking from... Uh, positive nine and a half volts to negative nine and a half volts which that appears to be that's what's happening so it'll pause for three seconds positive nine volts negative nine volts pause for three seconds all right so that means that motor two is working let's check motor one here all right so now we're in motor one let's see if we're getting the same thing Yep, that appears to be correct. So that means that our we're getting the correct voltage through here. So uh, now all we should have to do is plug in our motors and we should be able to visualize this voltage going up and down with the uh, rear wheels turning and the uh, front wheels turning. Okay, so you'll be able to see I have the uh, RC car up and running with the code that we wrote. And here is our contraption all put together. You can see the rear motor leading into the H-bridge here. And the front motor leading into the H-bridge here. And underneath there is our Arduino Uno chugging away. And just like you saw in the code, it sends the current in one direction and then in the other direction, and then it pauses for three seconds. There's the first, there's the second, and then it pauses. So uh, this is neat because now this is the this is the basics. This is uh, this is everything we need to start making an interface with other stuff. So uh, something we might be able to do is uh, hook a Bluetooth card up to this or an XB module and uh, hook it into your phone or maybe a voice command module, whatever you want, anything you can dream, uh, you could hook up to this now, now that we have an interface uh, to the car. Um, and now, of course, this is a really hacked together version. You know, I've got scotch tape holding it together. And, um, you know, I could probably put a kid through college with as much scotch tape as I buy, uh, obviously all the wires. But, you know, it, it's quick and it's dirty and it works. But uh, yeah, so, you know, this is a neat little project to uh, get you rolling. And if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. Uh, it's at Anthony Russell uh, and the O and Anthony is a zero. 
Uh, you can also reach me at anthonyrussell.info. Uh, that's my uh, tech blog. And I look forward to hearing from everyone and uh, hearing about your comments on the uh, tutorial. If you have any improvements, please let me know. Uh, or please uh, feel free to link your own hacks. I'd love to see what people do. All right. Thank you for watching and have a great day.